Hi everyone. I have decided to try to understand the proof of Fermat's last theorem by uh, Andrew Wiles. I've wanted to do this for about 20 years and have never been able to find an explanation that went into it with a sufficient level of detail. It seems to be above everyone's head. I've taken a lot of math classes before, but I've forgotten most of it. So all of this is going to be new, but I thought that I would just go through the paper and learn things as they come up. This might take several years to do, but I'll just record it as I'm learning. So I thought the first thing to do is just go through a couple pages of the introduction and pick out the concepts that I don't yet understand. So here is the uh, journal that it's in, Annals of Mathematics, and there's Andrew Wiles. He's on the editorial board, which is a little bit suspicious, I think, um, May 1995. It's a weird thing. This is the second series of volume 141, number three. But as you'll see down here, the header says 142. I don't really understand why. Anyway, here it is. This is the paper. Uh, modular elliptic curves and for Matt's last theorem. So if you know anything about it, uh, Basically, what he proved is that elliptic curves are modular forms. And as had been proven previously, that implies Fermat's last theorem. So uh, that's the confusing part, along with the rest of it, is what are elliptic curves, what are modular forms, and how are they related to Fermat's last theorem. Um, so some of this I know already, but very little of it. So we'll just go through it. And... Uh, here, I think this must be the, this is the uh, the note in the margin of Fermat's notebook, um, but it's all in Latin. Uh, but it says, like, two quadratics, um, and then here's where he says, I think this, this margin is too small to... Uh, to explain what he did, but I don't really see, I don't really understand what that is. Okay, so let's get to it. These are the things we're going to need to know in order to understand this proof. Uh, an elliptic curve. Okay, I'm just going to write down, for now, I'm just going to write down the things we're going to have to learn, and then we're going to go back over it and go deeper into it as much as we need to until we have it all figured out. So elliptic curves uh, over Q. Uh, so some stuff I do already know, like Q I know is the rational. So, um, I'm not really sure what level to explain this to you. Uh, maybe if someone in comments wants me to explain something and it seems like I understand that you don't, I can, but Q just means rational numbers, which is fractions, um, is said to be modular. Don't know that. Uh, if it has a finite covering, don't know what a finite covering is. I remember covers from real analysis, but don't know what that has to do with this. Um, by a, if it has a finite covering by a modular curve of the form uh, x0, x sub 0, n. Okay, well, does that explain it? Any such elliptic curve has the property that its has while zeta function has an analytic continuation and satisfies a functional equation. Some of these things I think that I might understand once we get into it a little more, but I'm just going to write it down because I'm, I'm not sure right now of the standard type. I don't know what the standard type is. If an elliptic curve over Q with a given J invariant is modular, then it's easy to see that all elliptic curves with the same J invariant are modular, in which case we say that the J invariant is modular. A well-known conjecture which grew out of the work of Shimura and Taniyama in the 1950s and 60s, that is the most important part of uh, for Matt's last theorem is the uh, Taniyama Shimura conjecture. 
So I can tell you here very shortly, and then we can go into it more later, and he's going to explain it here. But the Taniyama Shimura conjecture is the conjecture that says that all elliptic curves are modular. That has never been proven, or was had never been proven. But in the 80s, uh, someone realized that if that is true, it should imply Fermat's last theorem. I think that was Frey, which we'll get to. He wasn't able to prove it, but then Ken Ribbit did prove that piece in 1986. So now we realized as of 1986 that if, if the Taniyama Shimura conjecture is true, then Fermat's last theorem has to be true. That piece was proved, but the actual conjecture has not yet been proved. So that's where, that's what Wiles did, is he proved the, that conjecture, that elliptical curves are modular forms. So, uh, so here it is. In 1985, Frey made the remarkable, it might be Frey, made the remarkable observation that uh, this conjecture should imply Fermat's last theorem. The precise mechanism relating the two was formulated by Sir, so I'm going to write, write down these guys' names too, um, as the E conjecture, and this was proven by uh, Ken Ribbit in 1986. Ribbit's result only requires one to prove the conjecture for semi-stable elliptic curves in order to deduce Fermat's last theorem. So that's interesting. So while here doesn't prove this for the, the conjecture for all elliptic curves, only the semi-stable ones, I have no idea what semi-stable means, but it's only the semi-stable ones that are required for Fermat's last theorem. So interestingly, while in this paper could see how to do it, but he didn't go ahead and do it. He stopped with the semi-stable elliptic curves that was then proven a few years later using this paper. Uh, so once we have this all figured out, maybe we'll go and understand that proof too. Um, so our approach is to study, our approach is to study the elliptic curves via their associated Galois representations. Now I know Galois, but I'm not sure what they mean by Galois representations. Um, and so we can talk about Galois more later. Uh, suppose that rho sub p is a representation of gal, which I assume is the gal representation, q over a uh, q bar over q. On the p division points of an elliptic curve over q, and suppose for the moment that p that row three is irreducible. The choice of three is critical because crucial a crucial theorem by Langlands and Tunnels tunnel shows that if row three is irreducible, then it is also modular. We then proceed by showing that under the hypothesis that rho sub three is semi-stable at three, together with some milder restrictions on the ramification of row three at the other primes every suitable lifting of row three is modular. To do this, we link the problem via some novel arguments from commutative algebra. By com novel, I think he means that this is what he has to do in his paper. So he had to invent these arguments in order to do this. Novel arguments from commutative algebra, which is something else that I knew once upon a time, but I have forgotten, except that it means uh, groups that are um, commutative, so x plus y equals y plus x. To a class number problem of a well-known type. This we then solve with the help of the paper TW. So the paper TW is the Taylor Wiles uh, paper. And if you know the history, Wiles came up with this proof and it looked like it was valid. And at the last minute, there was one little problem that didn't seem to be working. And it turned out to be a huge problem. And it, in fact, destroyed the proof. So he had to back off 
and then he uh, hired a uh, grad student named Richard Taylor to help him to see if they could repair the problem. That took them another year, and then they wrote this paper, the Tyler, the Taylor Wiles paper, which is at the end of this paper, which we'll get to, uh, in order to then prove as the final piece to prove uh, Wiles theorem. Uh, this suffices to prove the modularity of E as it is known that E is modular if and only if the associated three attic representation is modular. Is modular. The key development in the proof in this proof is a new and surprising link between two strong but distinct traditions in number theory, the relationship between Galois, Galois representations and modular forms on the one hand and the interpretation of special values of L functions on the other. The former tradition is, of course, most more recent. Following the original results of Eichler and Shimura in the 1950s, In the main uh, and in sixties, the other main theorems were proven by Delinia, Serre, and and Land Lang Lands in the period up to nineteen eighty. This included the construction of Galois representations associated two modular forms. The refinement of Langlands and Delinia, later completed by Carroll. And the crucial application by Langlands of base change methods of the rather special weight one class case, including the extension by tunnel of Langlands. original theorem. There was no progress in the direction of associated modular forms to Galois representations. From the mid-1980s, the main impetus to the field was given by the conjectures of Serre, which elaborated on the E conjecture alluded to before. Besides the work of Ribbit and others on this problem, we draw on some of the more specialized developments of the 1980s, notably those of Hida and Mazur. The second tradition goes back to the famous analytic class, uh, analytic class number formula of Dirichlet. Dirichlet is a name I know, that's an old one, but owes its modern revival to the conjecture of Birch and Swinnerton Dyer. In practice, however, it is the ideas of Iwasawa in this field on which we attempt to draw and which, to a larger extent, we have to replace. The principles of Galois, Galois cohomology and in particular, the fundamental theorems of Poitou and Tate. Wow, look at that. Poitou is known by the by my uh, Word document. How about that? Uh, also play an important role here. The restriction that row 3 be irreducible Don't know what irreducible means. Uh, at three is bypassed by means of an intriguing argument with families of elliptic curves that share a common row five. Using this, we complete the proof that all semi stable elliptic curves are modular. In particular, this finally yields a proof of Fermat's last theorem. In addition, this method seems well suited to establishing that all elliptic curves over Q... Oh, this is the sentence I was talking about before. In addition, this method seems well suited to establishing that all elliptic curves over Q are modular 
and to the generalization uh, to other totally real number fields. So this is where Weil didn't go as far as proving that all elliptic curves over Q are modular. He only did it for the semi-stable ones because that's all that was necessary to prove for Matt's last theorem. Okay, now we, rep now we present our methods and results in more detail. So I'm going to stop here. You can see now he goes back over it using actual math, eigenform, so we're already lost. So then he has a few theorems here. Uh, and then he proves them. There's a conjecture, theorem 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. And then 0.6. Remember, this is just the introduction. This isn't actually the proof yet. Now, this is more history. We could probably understand this. Now he's describing the outline of the, uh, the actual paper. Here's, meanwhile, in January 1994, Richard Taylor had joined me in an attempt to repair the Euler system argument. Uh, and then finally, he thanks people. Here's the table of contents for his proof. Takes him five chapters, I think 120 pages, and that's it. So I'll stop here for now, and then we're going to have to start, I think... We're going to have to go through all of this several times. I think we're going to start by trying to understand elliptic curves in a general sense, and then we'll move on and then come back to understand them more carefully uh, later. I've seen some videos on elliptic curves, so I can explain basically what they are pretty well, but what they have to do with uh, anything, I'm not sure. So, okay, thank you for watching. Support me on Patreon, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.